What is amplification? Have you seen a meme or heard a saying? There's an app for that. It's basically referring to the amplification of the web. The amplification of the web is a new term that is used to describe the trend when websites that would normally be accessed via a browser can now be accessed via a dedicated mobile app. These days it is quite common to expect a business to have both a website and a mobile app. The factors driving businesses to create apps for their customers' mobile phones is mainly because of the limited features that are available on a web browser as well as trying to find a way to maximize the speed that information is loaded or provided to customers. If you have an Instagram account, then you can try this yourself. Log on to your Instagram account on a browser. You can do this on your phone or even on your desktop computer. Compare the process it takes to access the website on a browser compared to the Instagram app you normally use on your smartphone. You first of all have to open the browser. Maybe open a new tab, type in the URL address, wait for the website to load, and then go to the login section to enter your username and password, and then wait for the website to load. A lot more complicated than just simply clicking on the Instagram app. Now that's just one advantage of using apps instead of a browser website. You don't have to remember the URL or put websites into your browser's bookmarks. You can simply open the app. Other advantages include the app's interface is a lot easier to navigate with buttons and menus and it makes it easier to use. On a browser you are limited to hyperlinks and other browser features which are still great but not as versatile as an actual program. When you download the app you are downloading a program that has all the functionality and details regarding the layout of the interface. So all you now need to access when you use the app is the data that is being displayed. When you access the website on a browser, you need to not only download all the data, but also the layout of the data and functionality. And this happens every time you refresh or go to a website on a browser. This means a significant less amount of data is needed to be downloaded when you use the app. And not only is data saved by using the app, but because there is less to download, this means the information can be presented faster, adding to the impression that the app's response time is faster than a browser. Your apps are known to provide you with notifications in the background or when your mobile device is locked. So now you can be notified when someone likes your latest Instagram post or when a business is promoting a new special, compared to your web browser which needs to be open and active in order to get these notifications. An app on your phone has access to more tools and processing power on your mobile device. This allows you to have access to other hardware components like sensors or your microphone. Some browsers may be able to access some of these tools, but definitely not all of them. So app developers really have more options when creating their apps. Now most mobile apps require some sort of internet connection in order to get updated information and data. An app tends to store the data that is already viewed recently into what we call the app's cache memory. This is in order to load that seen data quickly. The benefit of this is some apps, but not all, will allow you to view the cache data if you are offline. This means that apps can be used when offline, but only to view information and data you have already seen. You will still need to access the internet to download the latest information and posts. And some content or offers are only available via your mobile app. While this is only a consequence of the business trying to promote people to use the app and not really a consequence of the app itself, it is still an advantage. Businesses market app exclusive offers for certain products or your first burger bought through the app is half price. You won't have access to these specials or promotions on the browser, so if you want them you better download the app. Your phone also has features that monitor your app so you can use this information to monitor how often you are using that particular app. If you are concerned it may be taking up too much of your time. Although these are great advantages, there are still a couple of disadvantages to take note of if you are using mobile apps instead of the browser. Firstly, apps take up space on your device's storage. Now if every website is an app, then your device's storage is going to get used up very quickly. We all know that feeling when you are trying to install a new app and there isn't enough space, so you have to uninstall other apps. So you try to see which ones you haven't used in a while. And having these apps can result in something people call app overload, where you have too many apps on your mobile device and spend half the time trying to find where the app is stored on your menu, or you have to now manage the app settings, like which ones you want to receive notifications for and which ones you do not. And while we said it's great that the app can access your phone's features and sensors, it can also access your data and folders on your device. Apps have access to your photo gallery and files on your phone, and while we tend to trust businesses will not be malicious with this access, it may be wise to read the terms and conditions so that you know exactly what information and hardware components your app is using on your mobile device. Do we really need that one burger takeout app that we use once or twice a year to be able to access your photos in your gallery? Maybe in that case use the browser instead. 
But either way, there are benefits to both options, the app or the browser. You just need to decide which ones you want to access via an app and which ones you're okay going through the browser. My suggestion is use the app for whatever websites you go to regularly anyway. To learn more about computer stuff, make sure that you go and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms. Leave a like, leave a comment. Also, follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.